never been higher in contemporary India than now. The country believes it finally has a government which has a vision of prosperous India and that vision includes a pakka house for every Indian by the year 2022. Not much of a surprise then is it that the real Real Estate BSC Index, that's a BSC Realty, surged thrice as much as the broader BSC Index in the month of June. To provide a pakka roof over every Indian's head will mean massive investments in the housing sector and perhaps along with that, a revival of the sluggish real estate sector. Easier said than done though. The sector faces multiple challenges and right before the first budget of the finance minister Arun Jaitley, the industry is ready with its long list of demands. Can the finance minister fulfill a few, if not all of them? How many of these expectations are realistic? Which are not? Let's thrash all of that out and get to that one big answer. What will it take for the Pakka House for All dream to come true? My panel today, Arish Puri, Chairman and Country Head, JLL India. Lalit Kumar Jain, CMT Kumar Urban Development Limited and Chairman Kridai. Rajiv Talwar, Group ED DLF. Mohit Goel, CEO OMAX Limited. Gaurav Karnik, Tax Partner Real Estate Practice EY. And Raj Minda, Corporate Chairman, RMZ Corp from Bangalore. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me. I think the very first big question is, what should one be focusing on? What should the FM be focusing on? Rajiv Talwar, voice of the industry, tell me. Is a broader recovery a far more critical thing than industry-specific SOPs today? I think both. Uh, Manisha, just to let everyone know that if there are going to be houses for every Indian with a pakka roof over his head, the estimated shortage by the Ministry of Urban Development is 30 million units. I take that each unit will be about 400 to 500 square feet. And if you go high-rise, which will be inevitable in cities existing or the 100 new cities that are planned, then the rough area to be made would be about 1,000 units if we take it, give and take some. Then 30 million units translates itself into 30 billion square feet to be made. If 30 billion square feet have to be constructed in the next eight years, and 2,000 rupees per square foot is the rough cost as per PWD, then we are looking at an investment of 60 trillion rupees, which is roughly equivalent to $1 trillion. I think that kind of boost to the, to the economy is a huge upside. And therefore, now with the big picture, and 38 or 35 percent of this investment going into tax revenue, I think let's look at the small steps which need to be taken for the success of this industry and for the success of the dream that yes, if India has managed to provide clothes and food to all, then why not a house to everyone, which okay. is not only a great measure of security, but also changes the psyche of every human being. Fair enough. So we'll come to the, what is needed exactly to get the ball rolling. How do you get that $1 trillion inside and also, of course, boost the economy. Anuj Puri, do you think that this government finally recognizes that, you know, you start or give an impetus to both housing and construction and that itself could be a huge booster for economic growth and revival? Or do you think these, this is still not something that the government has understood, at least in India so far, we've not had that kind of linkage being understood by the government. So Manisha, first of all, uh, you know, going back to the first question that you asked Rajiv, and in support of what Rajiv said, I would add that the broader economy recovery is a must. Uh, you know, real estate really doesn't have its own two legs. It piggybacks on the economy. If the economy is not going to progress, we guys are not going to progress. You know, the jobs have to be created. There has to be a demand for housing that gets created with those jobs. Uh, retail, manufacturing, you know, office uh, space requirements. So all that is required. So I, I do believe is that with the new government, which is, you know, a lot more stronger, stable, business friendly, they will be able to move the economy, um, you know, above five, five and a half percent. And, you know, in sort of the next 12, 18, 24 months, we'll be moving to about 6.5%. Because that, to my mind, is a crucial factor for anything to come in the real estate. 
The second is really getting into the subsection of real estate, and it's a stated uh, uh, you know, manifesto by the new government to say that as India completes 75 years of independence by 2022, we want housing for all. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. Is it a Herculean task? Huge amount of Herculean task. Not only from the perspective of uh, financial, and you know, Rajiv is absolutely correct, a trillion dollars, you know, how do you get trillion dollars into this economy? Uh, is the government prepared? Do they understand it? I think there is an indication that yes, they are understanding it clearly. You know, Gujarat as a state has been able to deliver it. Would they be able to bring in the right policies? It remains to be seen. Um, is there going to be a, a, a harmonious dialogue between the developers and the government? That is a must. And you know, Manisha, on your shows again and again, you know, I've got Laliji with me on my on my right hand side. Every time they've said is our biggest challenge is the approval process. And I'm sure again in the, your show, that will be the first thing that will come up. Second is how do you provide the tax stops? I don't think so the government is going to provide land free to the developers to say that this is for affordable housing. But what can you do in providing tax stops? How can you bring down the interest rates on financing? How can you bring down home loan rates? How can you liberalize FDI for affordable housing? How can you take it as an industry status? How can you bring in the REITs so that a lot of the money that is, that is stuck in commercial properties is liquidated and monetized, and then you can bring that into the real estate sector? I'm sure government quarters are thinking, and on 10th of July, you know, I do hope that there is some reflection that comes out on the real estate sector, because I can clearly tell you in the last three or four budgets, the word real estate hasn't been uttered at all. Uh, so we have been completely ignored, and I do hope this time the government recognizes that this is an integral part of the economy, and we need to give that the requisite push that it requires. But at this moment in time, clearly, you know, the government's push will be required to make sure that the momentum on the real estate picks up. Absolutely. So, so let's get to that industry status to affordable housing. I mean, I know that the industry or the sector, Laliji, has been asking for industry status for the entire sector. I think that's a bit far-fetched, won't you agree? Should the start be made by and immediately on 10th July by giving an industry status to affordable housing, which is essentially means easier access to bank borrowings, ECBs, tax incentives, all of that that Anuj has already laid out. Well, Manisha, most important that I like to add to what Anuj and uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Talwar has said. See, housing doesn't have to wait for economy to grow. Housing will drive economy. So, if you see NDA government in 1998 began with housing industry, it kick-started growth, it kick-started the core sector like steel, cement, etc. And then uh, we grew to uh, double digit. Now, same, we have to, we don't have to reinvent, we have to just relive. I think NDA government realizes this. The home loan rates will have to come down to begin with. Now, industry status or infrastructure, infrastructure status. See, RBI has been very unfair to this segment. Uh, housing sector has been harmed by uh, either bias, you may say, or ignorance. According to me, because we are not funded, not funded well and not funded at lower rate, we have to depend on market, on NBFCs or HNIs, and we borrow at higher rate. Therefore, housing is costly. Housing projects get delayed because there is no funding. But there is paucity of fund. So, if you see what I expect uh, from finance minister, and I think it is not far-fetched. Uh, infrastructure status is a must. Also, I feel that we should not for the wait entire inflation. industry or just affordable housing. These are two very, very different topics I am of discussion. Of entire industry. Okay. Entire industry. See, it is very ridiculous approach that. In affordable housing has a different status. Yes, I do say that low income housing, that is houses below 10 lakh rupee, should get priority status, not infrastructure status. Entire housing. Now, why we people segregate commercial from residential housing? 
if there is no commercial development, how do you generate white collar jobs in urban areas? Okay. Lalit ji, if hold your thought there. I get your point. So you are saying that look, the entire sector has a potential of reviving the economy and the NDA government has done that. They did allow 81B and under that section there was some leeway for construction between 2000 and 2008 uh, which were made tax free. Raj Minda come in here. So I'm, what I'm hearing is both the developers saying that look, you just focus on housing, you focus on giving industry status, ease up the financing and guess what? The entire economy and all the ancillary industries will push growth forward. Anush Puri says you need to kickstart the economy before any miracle will happen. Where do you stand on this? I think uh, I completely agree with all the uh, uh, all what has been said so far. The point I'm trying to also add here is we'll have to see that we'll run a short on materials and labor very rapidly, because even at the current position, you know, uh, there's always a shortage of materials. The prices of most of the materials are being pushed up. I think we'll have to allow imports to you know help this whole uh, business to move forward. Otherwise, what will happen is our costs of materials are going to keep shooting up as they've been seeing even post this new government taking over. And you know this challenge is going to continue if the economy gets on the track as promised by the government, which I hope it, it does happen. And then we'll we'll get scuttled again with, with shortage of uh, material and labor. So I think keeping that in mind, other than the tax swaps everybody just spoke about, which is obviously essential for the developers to be motivated to and self-induced to you know uh, uh, take the lead and and provide the housing, which is a much need of the hour. Mm -hmm. And that's how they'll do it. I mean, expecting the government to do it is a, is a complete uh, you know waste of time. Uh, rather that you know the, each developer is given enough of a tax incentive so that they feel motivated enough to create this low income uh, group housing and right. uh, providing shelter for all. I mean that's the view I think uh, I would like to add a little dimension which is missed out so far. Mohit, do you think developers will get into the sector affordable housing? So far they've just stayed away from there. So I do have developers like Poddar who have come around and said even in the current situation and scenario it is possible to do affordable housing. So I don't know why some certain sections of developers or large number of developers say, look, it is impossible to do affordable housing in the present scenario. Where do you stand on this? So first of all, I would like to say right now, right now we're talking about what industry wants. Hmm. I just want to say what industry wants is equal to what customer wants. What we are uh, working here is for to get the cost of the houses low so that the customers can come and buy in. And Absolutely. I mean, affordability is there and a lot of developers are working in this affordable sector. I mean, uh, the lot of companies who are working in tier two, tier three uh, cities and they're making townships and the, uh, the unit over there they're selling is around 30 lakhs, 40 lakhs, which is affordable for those, for those people staying there. So uh, looking at something which is doable, see infrastructure status, everybody is talking that the, it should be given to the whole industry. If it is given to the whole uh, real estate sector, the fund is limited to the country right now. So uh, PM has to decide what fund, absolutely. where to give, where to I be think, given. I, I mean, think he's being a little so, bit more practical so on his absolutely. List so I'm just going to yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm just going to talk about what what can be done. Mm. So I think the first priority for uh, the PM should be to give infrastructure status to the affordable housing because that is the need for the country. I mean, I really believe that the citizen of this country should get the pakka house. Uh, 20, 2022 is possible by but, doing but, a lot of things. But, okay, so here's back to one question. If it does happen, because that's probably the most likely thing that we might hear in the budget along with REITs, that's, we'll come to that. Uh, would you then be more incentivized to take on an affordable, a truly affordable housing project? See, today also we are doing a lot of affordable housing projects, but of course, once the infrastructure state is given to the affordable sector, particularly you affordable pass sector. On the benefits? Can you bring down the prices? Absolutely. Down? Okay. Absolutely. Let's we hold pass the thought there. Gaurav, you've been listening to all sides of this story. Of course, both of them have to go hand in hand. So some of it has to come directly to the sector, and then there has to be a larger boost on fiscal consolidation and investment kick, kick off in the economy. But tell us, what is critical today? I mean, that vision of 2022, it, $1 trillion ain't going to come that easily. Developers aren't going to jump into the fray just because you have an industry or an infrastructure status. So what do you think the FM will do this budget? So I think, you know, if you look at the economy, the economy has to grow first. Real estate, infrastructure and manufacturing. I think these are the three thrust areas where the government has to focus. They all are intertwined with each other. Real estate has, you know, maximum forward and backward linkages. It gives jobs, etc. But you need the other two sectors to also pick up. So I think his thrust will be on all three. And secondly, if you look at the real estate sector, clearly uh, it's not been there. Not been too many stops in the past. 
So there should be some sort of a tax holiday on the on the affordable housing. You're there, expecting that. There should be some clarity. If it's clarity. a vision of 2022, it's, why will it not come? Yeah, if it doesn't come now, then you know that vision ain't going to happen in eight correct. years. And it's there in some form already. It's mm -hmm. some sort of clarifications that are required because they already have an incentive on capital expenditure. But today, you know, housing is stock in trade, so you don't get the benefit. Mm -hmm. There is a there's a lot of indirect taxes, you know, service tax, VAT, which is being levied, which makes it really unaffordable. So that's okay. another issue. So that should also be clarified. And the third part, and to cl clarify that, one of the ways it could be done is through GST. If we include real estate sector in GST, then we definitely can get. Do you think know, that's a possibility? There's a clear poli possibility. You know, if the industry is in favor of it, I think the, the FM can really look at it very seriously. All right, I'm sure that the ministry is working over time. But uh, one of the other things which I think was mentioned by Anuj and also seconded by Gaurav Karnik here, introduction of REITs. Now, we do know that the government is working to finalize rules that will govern the trust as early as next month. At least that's the news. Is, that's what the news is. The finance ministry now in the budget is expected to clarify tax rules for REITs. And that hope is that just like mutual funds, REITs will also get a tax pass through, exempting them from both corporate and dividend tax. We'll come back and take the topic of REITs and what it can do to unlock value of real estate assets and actually infuse the much needed liquidity. Welcome back. When you're looking at budget demands uh, from the real estate sector, I think the long trying need has been the introduction of REITs, that's Real Estate Investment Trust. Now, these are like mutual fund units which hold a lot of commercial infrastructure, commercial real estate assets and then all the income which is generated out of these assets are of course uh, passed on to the REITs holders just like you do in a mutual fund investment. That's to put it as simply. So if you can't buy a commercial asset and spend let's say 10, 20, 30, 40 lakhs, you can still buy it as a mutual fund. Now, what does this do to actually kickstart the real estate sector as a whole is the big question. So let me toss to Gaurav first. Gaurav, why is REIT so important? And let's explain it in layman terms for our viewers because you know, it's a technical term and they need to understand. So very simply put, like you correctly pointed out, the REIT is really similar to a mutual fund. So there is a trust vehicle, which is the main vehicle which holds the property. The REIT, the trust vehicle can either hold the property directly or it can hold it through an SPV. Basically the way the SEBI guidelines are that 90% of the funds of the REIT have to be in completed property. 10% can be in developer, developed paying property as such. And the other part is that the investors in the REIT are just akin to the mutual fund investors. The REIT will be listed on the stock exchange. Mm -hmm. The other part is that you know, it has a trust manager. So uh, you know, there's a manager to the trust as well who makes sure that the investments happen in the correct manner. There are also lots of rules around related party transactions so that you know, the right valuation so the is there. So the investor is safe? His the investor is very safe. Hmm. And, it, and REIT as, an, uh, you know, as a vehicle is very popular overseas. And even if you look at the pension fund, the type of fund that we want to come into the Indian economy, they are quite comfortable with the REIT structure because it gives an institutional framework to the real estate sector. Okay. And clearly enough safeguards which are put into this REIT structure which enable them to be comfortable with investing in Indian real estate. So there's a good reason why it should come in. It should uh, really, and it, you know, if we have this as another vehicle, it improves the savings economy. If we improve the savings economy, we also help you know the current account deficit and the fiscal deficit. Okay. Otherwise, you end up buying gold or you know. All right, you've convinced me completely, and I'm sure everybody else in the finance ministry is convinced as well. Anish Puri, do you think there's a high chance that the you know the tax pass through will come through in this budget for REITs? So several things, uh, Manisha. One is that if the tax pass through doesn't come in or the other tax requirements that are there, not only on the dividend distribution, but also you know, understanding of how the capital gains is going to be treated, how stamp duty is going to be treated, how service tax is going to be treated. I think you know, the scheme will be dead before, before it is born. So I, I, and I clearly see is that the government's intent this time is not to come out with a scheme which will not attract foreign investment. Uh, I, I, and that's why they have been pretty much coordinating with the industry to say what is it required, how do more mature markets work, and how does the taxation have an impact in those markets? To just uh, say two, two other points, Manisha, if I can. Um, one is that you know, REITs would largely be for office and perhaps a little bit for retail. Uh, it's not going to be really for the housing sector. So this is 
really the retail investors wanting to buy, you know, like they were subscribing to the IPOs of real estate developers, they are today going to be buying out units uh, for, you know, REITs, which will be giving dividend distribution through the rental that are coming in on the office or the retail. Housing, you know, the yields are one or two percent. It doesn't make any sense to really do a REIT on that at this stage. The second point that I want to say is, you know, whilst the retail investors will come in, I think they are not going to be the first ones to come through. I think this will be largely institutions or banks who are going to come in. This will be a lot more mature investors mm -hmm. who are first going to look mm -hmm. at it, and that's when they're going to move on, and that's and, and thereafter the retail you know investor is going to come in. Is it a big market? I think it's a it's a huge market because just in data, there is 350 million square feet of grade A offices across India, out of which 100 million square feet can be reated, you know, which is a big portfolio, 100 million square feet. The approximate value of that 100 million square feet is $10 billion. So there is a potential of $10 billion to come into this country for buying REIT uh, listed stocks of commercial or retail properties. So a huge amount of you know, appetite that can come in there. We've seen a lot of foreign private equity players, you know, whether that is Blackstone and Brookfield, and you know, Blackstone is the second largest developer on the office sector just after DLF, you know, Brookfield or you know, GIC or the Canadian Pension Funds or some of the Middle Eastern sovereign funds. A uh, lot of these guys buying those properties because the yields are so attractive uh, on that. So clearly, I, I think it'll be a great move if the government can bring in REIT, but your point is very valid, Manisha, that the taxation will really need to look at it. Otherwise, there is not going to be the required momentum or impetus that is required to collect money from overseas. All right, Rajiv Talwar, how does it help the developers? Well, it helps the developers because you can reinvest money. In fact, REITs is sorely needed in this country for especially commercial space and retail space, as Anuj has very rightly said, including, now we can do another one. We can also allow FDI to come into completed retail and office commercial space assets so that they too get monetized with a fixed, uh, I mean, uh, stay here for maybe five years to ten years. And that's the way that money will come in to be replowed into the sector. I think besides that, uh, Manisha, let's go over one or two steps which you were talking about and which one didn't have a chance to uh, go into the details. I think the biggest thing for residential housing is to empower the buyer. That is what we need. And one great step for that can be under Section 24B of the IT Act, the limit which is right now 1.5 lakhs and was set about 15 years ago, the moment we index it to inflation, it comes to something like about 5 lakhs. I think if that is done, it will only empower the buyer, it will increase savings and make a huge investment into residential. Raj Binda, first REITs and then of course we will come back to the big idea it's actually not an idea it's been something that one was hoping for will happen last budget itself increasing the tax exemption limit on repayment of home loan which hasn't but let me first go back to a little bit on the REITs front because you know your your portfolio is hugely office commercial retail so what do you think are you are you hoping that the tax benefits pass throughs will come and we will have REITs in ne let's say next 12 months or so Actually, I'm quite confident we'll have the REITs coming in uh, sooner and not later. And it'll help a, a lot of uh, investment because uh, the, uh, real estate always is you know, key for investing for most investors who do not want the hassle of you know, buying a property, looking after its ownership, you know, and, and then uh, collecting rent checks. Actually, this is a beautiful pass through. Uh, you know, as explained earlier, they can, through, like a mutual fund, they can get the money in their hand and also enjoy the appreciation which currently in India is close to 20% uh, compounded per annum. So, you know, you get appreciation on one side, you get dividend on the other. So it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's a very safe investment. And if uh, the love for real estate continues, you just buy the, this, uh, the, the mutual fund equivalent, that is the, the, the REIT share, and enjoy this uh, the ride uh, without having the headache of handling a, a specific asset. So I uh, personally believe, since a lot of excitement from the buyer's end, which will happen, and if the government just aligns all the, the protocols and the programs that are required to make it conducive both for the developer and for, for the buyers to buy into this REIT, 
I'll, I'll be you know, uh, very excited that we can do something equivalent to what United States and other countries like Japan and Singapore have a very successful okay. uh, REIT operation where a lot of retired people can simply depend on the income and the appreciation and they just swear by REIT and buy actually only REIT and don't buy anything else. So you know, I, I hope something like that happens where a lot of people can simply depend on the annuity and All the right. cash flow that of course, the REIT we generates. Will, for them. We will need a lot of safeguards as well in, in, in a country like India to have uh, REITs which are successful and safe enough for retired people to invest in. But let's go back to that another big uh, point which Rajiv Talwar raised and I think having done fi personal finance before doing real estate for the longest time, I do see it as the most valid demand to boost uh, demand overall for the real estate housing sector, especially residential. Increasing the tax exemption limit on repayment of home loans, currently a deduction of 1 lakh is allowed for payment repayment of principal amount and one and a half lakh for the interest component. Now this was raised in the last budget by an additional one lakh for first time home loan takers to promote the housing sector but there was a loan amount cap of up to rupees 25 lakhs. There aren't too many houses available in 25 lakhs. Why not just make it possible for everybody? Lalit Kumar Jain, I don't think that the larger demand of just bringing down interest rates on home loans is possible because interest rates have to move in tandem with just the way they are in the economy as a whole. But this particular demand of increasing the limits, as Rajiv Talwar has uh, outlined, should be possible and easily possible, isn't it? Yeah, till GST is introduced, definitely this is a proposal which ought to be uh, approved. However, I do not agree with your point that uh, interest rates cannot come down. See, we cannot wait for inflation to come down. For housing, we'll have to create a tax-free housing bond system whereby we get uh, uh, funds at 5% with 2, 2.5% arbitrage. We should be able to lend at 7, 7.5%. If that doesn't happen, then demand doesn't get stronger and there will be a mismatch. The economy doesn't grow. People don't get houses. So we need to address it differently. We can't connect it to inflation. Okay. Well, we all live in hope, but I don't think that's going to happen. It's a, it's a huge challenge to have dual interest rates, one for home loans and one for the rest of the economy. Uh, Anuj, has it happened anywhere in the world? I mean, does it happen? Because I, I, I don't know of the global history enough to have an opinion on it. Yeah, Manisha, you can have that. Uh, you can create a priority sector and within that priority sector you can create real estate either housing as just one sub vertical of that priority sector and differentiate uh, in, in providing both not just the mortgage uh, rates but also the construction funding to the developers at a discounted rate for the uh, for, for uh, homes. But just Manisha, one, one second whilst I have your attention, you know, just going back onto the REIT, one point I have either not understood it or, you know, I, I think it's worth a debate is, you know, we're talking about REIT for private developers. Is it not beneficial for the government as well? In, in the sense, Air India has a huge amount of real estate. Can they not REIT it out? LIC has a huge amount of real estate. All your nationalized banks have a huge amount of real estate. You know, can they not REIT out that real estate? and then take it back on rent. Talking about the tax being mm -hmm. akin to a mutual fund, I think we'll have to give a more of an incentive on the REIT mm -hmm. and maybe make it absolutely tax-free till you sell the units of the REIT. That's because otherwise you could invest in a property straight. Why do you want to go buy a unit of a REIT unless it is going to give you the yield? Absolutely. So because the REIT is more a yield play than an appreciation play. So absolutely. we really need to have a tax-free status both at the SPV level, the REIT level and only really tax it if at all, maybe 0 to 5% in the hands of the distribution tax, not a 15 or 16%. Right. So really that's a real incentive that would be needed. That's the only way that REITs will be successful yeah. and attract any of the big, uh, the, yeah. either pension fund or... or even for the developers, when they drop the assets into the REIT, they, they would need a capital gains exemption, otherwise it becomes a little mm -hmm. unviable. They could really sell it somewhere else. Alright, I'm sure there's enough been written about and presented to the Finance Minister and the need for REITs has been very well understood. We've also established that big point on increasing the exemptions on home loan, both the principal and the interest payment because that's something which has been pending even if you look at inflation, that limit has to go up. We'll come back and we'll of course uh, conclude with everybody's opinions on anything else that there is on their wish list from the Finance Minister on 10th July.
back. You're watching the big debate on the expectations from the first union budget of the finance minister Arun Jaitley. And of course, like I said at the start of the show, there's never been expectations and hope so high in the air with everybody. I mean, amongst everybody, the industry and uh, all of us, you and me. Will he deliver on housing, which is a basic need for all of us? We've discussed several points on affordable housing, REITs, and of course tax benefits which should be passed both to the sector, industry, players and of course you as a consumer when you take a home loan, otherwise also reduction of the numerous number of taxes which are imposed and come get passed on to you as a consumer of a house. The big question is what can he legitimately do, the finance minister? Remember he has a huge fiscal consolidation challenge as well. So what can come without harming that goal as well? Let me come to you Rajiv first. You know, we've spoken about so many SOPs, we do call them yes. SOPs at least, that's the way the government looks at them. There will be a loss of revenue, but do you think it'll all make up and how long can the government go through the pain point of boosting investments, bringing down interest rates, giving tax incentives, also managing fiscal consolidation goal? Correct. Manisha, you're very correct that yes, he has a very tough job on his hand right now. And therefore, let's not expect too many tax SOPs. I think let's concentrate on one or two measures. I think you've listed them out yourself, that the exemption, exemption limit, whether it's for repayment of principal or interest, that needs to be raised. And I think the step that he can take immediately without affecting revenue at all would be that 1% TDS, which is deductible by the buyer, and then to be deposited electronically, that I think maybe he can do it, uh, do away with on the primary transactions, and it can be even either paid by the developer or it can be paid, made payable on secondary transactions, which are single transactions. The other thing I think which he can give uh, Philip to will be the introduction of REITs and FDI into completed buildings, which will only get let's say a bonus that is additional investment and not something which will take away from the taxation revenue at all i think that should be the broad uh, focus right now in the given situation okay so he's not mentioned yet industry or infrastructure status to affordable housing Gaurav, what do you think i think it's important that realistically what will come through I think uh, one or two things should come through. One, maybe the exemption will go up from 1.5 lakhs to may not 5, Everybody may be difficult. Was expecting it to happen in the last budget, it didn't. It's not happened, so it may happen. The mm. second, on the affordable housing, maybe there'll be some tax holiday. Okay. Or clear, or more clarity on the tax holiday, which currently exists. Because you think a, that can be done without disturbing his goal of fiscal consolidation? There will be some give and take. So mm. at one stage, but if he wants to accomplish his goal of housing for all, etc., there has to be some some impetus given. Mm -hmm. And it's not been there for some time, so there should that be something should be. there. And I think the other one is on the uh, indirect tax. I think maybe the VAT and the service tax on you know it's on residential property. So maybe the only way for him is to put it into the GST net, and then you know solves it at one go. That there's a credit, mm -hmm. and there's no additional cost. So Moment. I think a couple of these things. So I was I would absolutely agree with him. And one thing I want I would. Uh, appreciate if the government does it, it's going to be ATIB, if they can extend it, and not for 1500 square feet or 1000 square feet, they can just make a parameter of any unit below 50 lakh rupees, they can con they can give you ATIB benefits. You think so below 50 lakhs is affordable housing today? Below absolutely, but I mean, what do, you, what do you get in 15 lakhs, 10 lakhs? I mean, <laughs> construction cost, we are living, we talk, construction yeah. cost today is 1500 rupees per square feet. So AD1B is something that you would be hoping it, for absolutely. within this budget. Okay, all right, uh, Raj Minda. Three key things. Is there anything we've missed out and you think the government can also look at without upsetting that big challenge of fiscal consolidation or bridging the fiscal deficit? I think uh, if I look at uh, a lot of uh, you know uh, job uh, creation happens as you know through the IT ICZs. I'm specifically talking about IT ICZs because you know uh, a, l a lot of white collar jobs get created. It's easier for them to you know uh, outsource into India. All the companies that have so far come into ICZs are extremely happy. So to my mind, if they just extend the tax holiday given to all these companies to come into the IT ICZs for an another 10 years, I think it'll give a big fillip to job creation and hence uh, you know a creation of wealth within the country and uh, uh, other than the profits which is what leaves this country at the end of it I mm -hmm. think uh, it does create a huge amount of employment 
and just simply getting uh, an a, a tax extend, extension for ITACZ will be good. In fact, it'll uh, you know, and or it'll also help in the REIT because in terms of uh, uh, all these are uh, our offices typically uh, which get REITed at the end of the whole process. So I think that will be a good. Uh, advantage if that is done in, in this. All budget. right, Kumar Jain, in the Kredai note uh, on demands from the union budget, I think that SEZ also found a very big mention. Do you believe that the government will look at it carefully this time? Because, I mean, look at the uh, today in news, there was denotification of one more large SEZ in Haryana. In Haryana. See, uh, I think it is inevitable and uh, uh, Prime Minister Mr. Modi's uh, intention to make India as manufacturing hub definitely will find SEZ uh, with right kind of soaps. And what Raj says is right. In uh, urban areas, white collar jobs are being created in IT and needs to be given preference. Here I will like to tell you, Manisha, one very important aspect. That when ATIB was given, uh, when 5 rupee uh, loss towards direct tax, there was an income of 15 rupees in indirect tax. Government net let did not lose rather because the activities multiplied and multiplied 30 times. So government was net gainer. Therefore, no tax, tax soap in this form is a loss making proposition. Also infrastructure status does not mean any loss of revenue to government. Banks will have little lesser margin over their uh, uh, interest rates and uh, profitability may be challenged. But Definitely, they will have comfort with otherwise lot of NPAs are now they may face in if this situation continues. Okay. Therefore, nothing is uh, a loss to government. All right, I'm going to go to Arish Puri and because of his experience, ask him to conclude with one thing. What does the industry need to do? You know, they're asking for so many things, Anush, but industry also has been lacking sorely on several fronts. I mean, banks don't have the confidence sometimes for some right reasons, isn't it? So if they had to, if the industry had to meet the government halfway, what does it have to do? And let's conclude on that note. I think it's difficult, uh, Manisha, to say one point. Uh, so, you know, if you would ask me one point, I, I think it will be more generalist in, in the approach, which will be more on transparency and governance. But I think you know, that is given today. I, I think that debate's sort of gone off the table. Uh, all the stakeholders believe that that is the right thing to bring in more transparency yeah, and, and, and governance. Otherwise, you know, as Lalaji is saying, is that your customer is not going to come in. I would just say two other things, Manisha. One is, uh, you know, infrastructure. And, and I know it wasn't a subject for discussion today. But unless, you know, India focuses on infrastructure, puts in the infrastructure, opens up large parcels of land, you know, we will continue to have a debate of how expensive housing is. Because in a city like Bombay, 70, 80 percent of your cost is really land. And that's because we haven't opened large parcels of land. So that's, that's one. Second is, uh, you know, it's interesting today uh, that not many of us on, uh, on this panel bought up the approval process. Because I do remember, Manisha, it's been a, a, a point of debate again and again in your session. My guess is probably people have lost hope that the government is going to even look at, you know, streamlining approval. So it is interesting when I was reflecting on the discussion that we've had that, you know, it's like, you know, nothing is happening. We've been saying again and again, but not even a slightest hope of uh, approval process getting streamlined. To my mind, you know, that is where the basic cause of liquidity concern, un inability to launch, you know, on the land funding, banks don't fund, the developers put equity from their own pocket, and then it takes two, three years for them to launch a scheme. You know, that's a big pain point. And the last one is, I think Rajiv summed it up well, which is on the FDI stroke REIT, um, you know, to, uh, to, uh, to attract more capital to come in without giving tax stops is only through bring, uh, is only by bringing in equity. And that will happen if you bring in the right liberalization on the FDI, you know, it's 50,000 square meters needs to be brought down to 20,000 square meters. Uh, the FDI in completed assets should be allowed in retail. Uh, non-FDI right. projects like corporate offices, and that's where you'll bring in additional funding without necessarily impacting the fiscal deficit. Fair enough. I think great ideas, uh, and I'm sure enough have been presented to the finance minister, and some of them come July 10th, uh, we will get to see. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me on today's discussion, July 10th. I'm hoping that some of you will be able to join me again. And let's hope that this time real estate does figure in the budget. Thanks very much for joining me.
All right, so that's the date we have, July 10th. Mr. Arun Jaitley will have to walk a tightrope between boosting growth and cutting deficit. He's facing huge expectations and challenges and we can only keep our faith and our fingers crossed that at least some of these big bank measures are delivered. See you again on the Budget Day, same time with the panelists of top speakers. Goodbye and thank you for joining me on Editorial Prime.